Nintendo did another really stupid thing over the weekend that it makes sense from a legal perspective, but it's also something that they shouldn't be doing. Now, this article by IGN kind of combines a couple things together, and I wanted to go over it a bit because it does add some clarification to what exactly happened that I didn't mention in my Smash video a while back. But this it's not particularly about Smash. This is actually about a completely different situation, as you can see in the title. But before we get into that, I want to kind of look at what's been happening with Nintendo lately. So, w Nintendo has a really bad history with the Smash Bros. community. Uh, they have not shown support to the competitive scene pretty much ever, and there was something that in particular that Nintendo shut down that wasn't, it, it just, Nintendo had, really should have left it alone. There are some things, especially during a pandemic, that you just have to let be, and this was one of those things. So, there was a, a, Sm a Super Smash Bros. Melee tournament going on, or about to go on, hosted by Big House. But because we can't do in-person events anymore, uh, at least not in 2020, I shouldn't say ever again, but in 2020 because of the pandemic, in-person is not possible. The only way to have a Melee competitive tournament would be online. The problem is that Melee doesn't have online. So to do an online tournament, you would need to modify copies of the game. Every person playing the game has a legit legal copy of the game. Uh, but yes, you would have to modify the game to enable online, and there is already a mod for that known as Slippy. The thing is that Nintendo views you doing that as you're using an illegal ROM. Now, Nintendo doesn't have any proof that the ROMs are illegal because it is legal to make a ROM. You can legally make a copy of a game if you have the ability to do so that you own. Now, there are some particulars in gray area, whether or not you're allowed to play that copy. It's supposed to be for backup purposes only, but this would seem to be a case where, you know, maybe you let this go, right? Melee is uh, has been mostly left untouched by Nintendo. They don't support it, but they haven't really stopped it that much. But, you know, it's a pandemic. Try to be understanding that this is the only way these tournaments can happen, uh, and just let it go. It's not affecting sales. You don't even sell Melee, right? It, 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 it's just dumb. And Nintendo themselves could have provided their own solution if they really wanted to to avoid all of this, but since Nintendo doesn't support the competitive Smash scene, of course they weren't going to do that. So they shut down the uh, tournament with a cease and desist. So Nintendo um, asked them to cancel the event, and basically, Big House said, we're not going to cancel. That's, that, that's dumb. It's a pandemic. Let people, you know, try to find some joy in this world. Well, Nintendo explained to Polygon that the tournament required the use of an illegal copied versions of the game in conjunction with a mod called Slippy. Now, they can't actually know if they're illegal copies of the game. Again, this is an assumption by Nintendo that people downloaded and shared a ROM instead of making their own. I'm just pointing that out. Nintendo has no legal proof that these were illegal copies. Anyways, but it says, in conjunction with a mod called Slippy during their online event, which is what enables the online play. Nintendo therefore contacted the tournament organizers and just asked them to stop. There was no legal stuff there. And the tournament refused, leaving Nintendo no choice but to step in to protect its intellectual property and brands. Nintendo cannot condone or allow piracy of its intellectual property. But this isn't... The, the, the problem with the argument that, that people have is that it's not really piracy, right? It's not. It's people running a tournament. They're not distributing games. They're not promoting this. They're just saying that this is the only way these tournaments can happen because you didn't include an online play functionality in these games or even a networking functionality in these games. GameCube can connect to the internet, but you didn't include a ability to network in any way, interface with it in any way. So a mod is required. Anyways, moving on. That's kind of the whole big deal there. That's why you've seen the hashtag free melee, all this stuff. Uh, we then saw Nintendo uh, shut down Splatoon stuff uh, just because the Splatoon community was showing support. Kind of, you know, a, a crappy move. It was Nintendo's own self-ran tournament. And uh, they live streamed the first bit of it. And then they shut down the finals live stream because it was going to have a bunch of teams that had hashtag free melee. And their announcers would have to be like, oh, free melee 217. 
uh, player, blah, 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 just to this, and they'd have to keep saying free Melee over and over again on official Nintendo streams. Wasn't going to be a good look for Nintendo, so they canceled it, which is also not a good look. I mean, they could have just told those teams, hey, if you want to participate, you need to change. But instead, they just said, you know what? We're not going to tell teams they need to change their names. We're just going to cancel the stream. We're still going to have the tournament, but we're you know not going to basically talk about it, advertise it, or show it like we did the previous rounds when the team names did not have hashtag free smash. All right, so moving on, there's another situation that Nintendo got involved in that this video is really about. And this is, <laughs> this is about Joy-Con cases. In particular, Joy-Con cases that are for charity. All right? So here we are over on Twitter, and there is these things called Eticons. I don't know if you guys um, are, are aware of Etika. Rest in peace, man. Um, he is a uh, former YouTuber that unfortunately took his own life. It's a very difficult situation. He dealt with mental illness, and people were really questioning if he was just some brilliant sociopath or had real mental illness going on. There was a lot of debate over the last year or two of his life about what was going on with him online some really strange behaviors over what he used to be like uh but he was really popular and he was arguably at the time one of the largest streamers on youtube he was definitely the largest you know nintendo oriented streamer he did play some other stuff he was one of the most popular live streamers ever on youtube and he got popular at streaming on youtube at a time when people were saying you don't stream on youtube you stream on twitch like streaming on youtube was not as popular as it is to do now like today having big streams on youtube isn't unusual we see mr beast do it we see pewdiepie do it we see spawncast blow up um we see a, a lot of different uh streams do really really well on youtube and youtube has really become a viable big streaming platform with twitch it hasn't replaced twitch just alongside of twitch but Etika came up at a time when it was hard to get popular at streaming on YouTube, and he did it. He pulled it off, and he was very entertaining. Maybe one of the most entertaining streamers I've ever watched in my life anyways. And when he had moments of clarity and got real and got down to earth, I, I still remember streams when he was talking about how hard he worked at um, bouncing his credit back from really bad decisions he made when he was younger uh, and all his plans, you know, to use that credit to buy a house. And like he, while he would go crazy and do some insane fun things, he seemed like a real person, real down to earth, a guy that had his shit together, obviously until he started having his mental lapses and breakdowns, which I'm sure he dealt with behind the scenes for quite some time before it got so bad that it leaked into the public uh, and leaked into the things he was doing. I, I, I feel horrible at how that whole situation went. I think the whole internet feels horrible at how we were reacting to it at the time, considering how it ended. And he is going to be always remembered in the Nintendo online community for what he did. So what happened is a fan created these. Uh, these are called Eticons, right? He did a, a fan funding uh, campaign for it, and all the money from that campaign goes to charity. It's not like some of the money goes in the manufacturing, the rest goes in the charity. He used his money to make these shells. These are just shells for the Joy-Cons. He used his money to make the shells, to get them manufactured, and then all of the money that people... Uh, supported with in in the in the fundraising campaigns which the first one failed but the second one didn't went to charity it's it's just a, a charity drive supporting mental illness right makes a lot of sense considering how uh Etika's life ended that the fan base of his would come together to create a product to entice people to spend money that goes and directly supports charity. It is a really positive thing, and this isn't new. The Eticons have been around for a little while, and what you're seeing here is a bin of the leftover ones from the campaign. So there was a bunch manufactured. Not all of them were quote-unquote sold during the campaign. So these ones that he had in this bin were being sold independently. And when I say sold, they're not for profit. All the money that you would spend on one of these Eticons. None of it went into his pocket. It all went straight to charity. There there was no profits to be gained here. This was just a... I mean, we're not even talking about getting the cost of manufacturing back. We're just talking... This was just nothing but a charity act. Okay? A limited charity act because there was not going to be another run of these Eticons made. So these are the leftovers he had from the campaign. And he was just going to sell them until they were gone. And that was that. He wasn't going to make any more because obviously it's a big money investment to do that. So, okay, cool. What's the, what, what's the problem here? Well, Nintendo sent 
a cease and desist. Remember, this is, these are not new products. Nintendo sent a, de- a cease and desist over shells for their Joy-Cons. Keep in mind, you can go on Amazon right now and find thousands and thousands of Joy-Con shells being sold. I have some. I don't see Nintendo shutting them down. Now, there are certain people that may be official partners, but I've never actually seen any of these studios have Nintendo's official seal, which means all these places that are selling these shells on Amazon don't have Nintendo's permission either. And so it's fair to say that Nintendo was pretty much letting this be fair game. They were letting the shells sell. They, you know, it was one thing they were doing that PlayStation isn't doing. See, PlayStation 5 and Sony shut down people making new shells that go on, uh, or new faceplates or whatever you want to call them that go on the PlayStation 5. You see, the PlayStation 5 has removable sides, so there were other companies out there creating custom sides uh, that Sony shut down and said, no, you can't do that. Uh, Nintendo never shut down any of these. This is the first one I have actually seen them shut down. So here's what they said. You are on notice that your production, marketing, and sale of the infringing products, your use of Nintendo trademarks in connection with these activities, and your false association with the Nintendo brand, they're called Eticons, okay, I guess the cons word, um, violate Nintendo's intellectual property rights. Nintendo will consider any further use of Nintendo intellectual property in connection with your business and the infringing projects to be willful infringement of Nintendo's Federally protected rights under the Layham Act, 15 U.S.C. 1125. This is referencing a prior ruling, obviously. And the Copyright Act of 17 U.S.C. 501. Liability for trademark infringement and unfair competition may include treble profits or damages, attorney fees and costs, and an injunction against further use of the infringed marks. Liability for copyright infringement may include Nintendo's actual damages and any additional profits earned by the infringer. It wasn't profits in the first place, but... Um, or statutory damages up to 150000 per work for f- willful infringement. In addition, liability for copyright infringement may include payment of Nintendo's attorney fees and costs. To avoid further legal action, Nintendo demands that you immediately cease all production, which ha- they haven't been in production uh, anymore, marketing, sale, and distribution. So he can't even give them away. He can't even just give them away to people because he can't distribute them at all uh, of the infringing products. And... All use of Nintendo's trademarks in connection with such products, including but not limited to all products found at the links listed in the attached exhibit B, which is this. So um, they're Joy-Cons. So having the Nintendo Switch logo on them is pretty standard. You know, any reference to a Joy-Con at all, at a con, Joy-Con, uh, a me, Wii Fit, Grookey, Score Bunny, Sobble, Pokemon stuff. Maybe there was some stuff mentioned in, in, as like rewards on the on the um, like tier rewards or whatever. I'm not exactly sure where these logos come in. Uh, the Pokemon logo they put up there. I feel like that's a custom made one, but it doesn't matter. They're saying you can't use it. Um, the the word Pokemon, etc. But if you like look at the actual, um, that's sorry, that was the original run. I'm trying to remember uh, where the actual joy. Here we go. So this is what they actually look like once they're on, right? I mean, that's pretty sick. Can, can we be honest? That's pretty sick looking. Joy-Con boys for life, right? The Joy-Con thing, Nintendo doesn't like. Again, Nintendo branding. Joy, like. But here's the thing. It's not that Nintendo is not within their legal right. See, this is Etika right here, for those who, who don't know him. It's not that Nintendo is not within their legal right. They are most definitely within their legal rights to shut this down. Just like they were within their legal rights to shut down the Melee tournament. But here's the thing. There, it's one thing to be within your legal rights. It's another thing to not recognize what's happening and letting it go for the sake of supporting a community, but not just supporting the community, but understanding the situation on a deeper level. The smash thing. Understanding it on a deeper level, we're in a pandemic. This was the only way these tournaments can happen. Understand it. Don't take this legal stance at a time when we are all struggling. This was a dumb stance to take against the Smash Bros. Melee community. And this is beyond Melee. Hashtag free Melee. It's not just about Melee. We have a huge post. I did a 25-minute video about all the ways that they have hurt Smash Bros. in general. Okay? In the competitive scene. It's not just Melee. 
Melee is just the most recent thing that have happened to him. Now we have this. This is for charity. This supports charity. It's your legal right to shut this down. But why? Like, who at Nintendo goes, man, out of all of the, you know, fake, you know, all, all the non-legal Joy-Con skins out there, we're going to shut down a temporary run of Joy-Cons that honor someone who died. Someone who Nintendo has had in their videos before with Reggie in the past. We're going to shut down a product that shows love for someone who unfortunately took their own life because it has Joy-Con on it. Joy You're coming after Joy-Con boys now? You weren't coming after Joy-Con boys when it was being put on t-shirts and all this other merchandise when Etika was alive? Why the hell are we going after it now? And now at a time when these are for charity. It's a charity drive. Why would you want to use your legal right to shut down something that is such a positive thing from your own community, from the Nintendo community? This is such a po like. It's not that you don't have the legal right. But you're not setting some horrible precedent by letting it go. The horrible precedent you're setting is shutting down this, but not shutting down all the other people making illegal Joy-Con um, uh, you know, skins like this. Illegal Joy-Con uh, shells, I should say. They have shut down someone who made skins. But illegal Joy-Con sh shells like this that are all over Amazon. You don't shut any of those down, but you're shutting down this. Something that's good for the benefit of everyone, for, for fans of this person that was an important part of the community, and also to help other people that have mental illnesses. I mean, Nintendo could have said, hey, we're not going to allow you to sell or distribute these, but hey, we'll buy, we'll buy these all off of you. Um, and give you, you know, like a one-time, you know, donation to this charity. Uh, we won't allow these to be distributed, but at least we'll show support, you know. In, in, in that way at least then you know that they're enforcing their legal rights but still looking good and that they're giving a, a, a nice donation to that charity but nintendo couldn't even do that they had to just go the complete legal route you're done sorry that bucket of them keep them to yourself we see you distribute them hundred fifty thousand dollars thank you very much it it's ridiculous but some people i've seen out there have also been looking at this as nintendo this is obviously Doug Bowser and Shintura Furukawa's fault. This would never happen under Iwata. This would never happen under Reggie. Eh, really? Let's take a look at, at, at this thread over here. So this recaps a few things, but I'm going to go a little bit deeper. So these are things that happened under Iwata and Reggie. Obviously, some people complain they always have the highest prices with, with games. I don't know. That's It's controversial, but I, I'm not going to sit there and hold that against them. That's just a business strategy. They're online while free has always been the worst of the bunch. Again, I won't hold that really against them other than saying that, yeah, they should do better, but I don't feel that's a problem. Overall, the services Nintendo provider have always been inferior. Uh, they had those YouTube copyright restrictions for years. Yeah, you guys forget that Nintendo was like one of the only major gaming companies at the time that was preventing us from using footage of their games in videos. That's crazy. You had a system you could sign up for that actively made it so you couldn't share footage of certain game. It, it was it was bad. It was bad. Nintendo eventually, due to community pressure, finally stopped. But, you know, if you thought this was the first Melee tournament shut down by Nintendo, you're wrong. They actually shut down a really big Melee tournament back in 2013. You know, a lot of people saying uh, Iwata wouldn't have accepted Mario 3D All-Stars or limited releases. When we All Stars and Four Swords DSI were also a thing, so Nintendo did this before. They have been taking down fan games for years. This is true. Nintendo is the most notorious at taking down fan games. Other companies do it here and there, but Nintendo pretty much will take down any major fan game. While most other companies will just kind of let it go and realize that's part of the community, that's the fans coming together, and it doesn't negatively impact sales. In fact, it just gives fans something to do in between releases, is what it is. Nintendo has always had this stance against fan games. Let me see here. Nintendo's worst DLC came out in 2014. Uh, that's the Mario Gold World Tour it's DLC. That, yeah, that DLC was not good. What a ripoff. They shut down Wii and DS Online less than two years after the Wii U came out. More or less at the same time, Mario Kart 8 was released, oddly enough. 
Um, they had region locking for years. Switch is like the first system where they really got rid of region locking. Uh, so that's, you know, again, region locking is kind of an anti-consumer thing. Pro, uh, it's pro retailer, right? Pro local retailer, but, but anti-consumer. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, the, the shutting down the, the, the online services, it's pretty unusual for online services for systems to be shut down within two years of new platforms coming out. Usually, you know, you get a five or six year leeway on that, sometimes longer. Two years and then conveniently when Mario Kart 8 was coming out, did not, it wasn't a good look at the time. NOA didn't even include Spanish text for some of their games for years, despite Spanish actually being a pretty big language here in the U.S., and we don't have an official language in the U.S. So not even the ones from Europe. So people from Latin America either had to learn English or pirate the game, thanks to region lock. They only stopped after they got a lot of criticism of Xenoblade Chronicles X and didn't include the Spanish text. But it wasn't the first time. Uh, they were censoring some of their games for no reason for a time. Yep, lots of censoring, especially here in North America for some ungodly reason. Um, a country that's more allowing of certain things and they still were censoring i've seen some people saying that they wouldn't have accepted pokemon sword and shield which is laughable since nintendo always released under one uh, that's a personal opinion but i think to go beyond this and, and i'm gonna kind of get off this post because a lot a lot of it seems a little bit nitpicky there is that nintendo of the old days the whole reason they lost third-party support isn't just because nintendo's reluctancy to switch to discs they had some really draconian practices in place with third-party companies um and this was needed when the nes came out i will say the draconian practices were needed because the industry had gone astray and was basically killing itself which is why the NES came at the right time and quote unquote saved the video game industry. This needed to happen. It, it needed to happen. Unfortunately, after it happened, after Nintendo saved it, you would figure Nintendo would maybe relax on it a little bit, right? Pull back on some of their restrictions on third party companies. Um, get a little loose, maybe never as loose as the industry once was, but at least ease up a little bit on some of the more crazy things. They had, they had things in place where like you had to get every single element of your game approved by Nintendo. Um, and if they didn't like it, you had to immediately change it. Like if you had blood in your game and they didn't like the blood, you had to change it. Uh, why? Like it, Nintendo was being really draconian. Uh, and again, needed for the NES was not really needed. I'd say after the SNES era, they, 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 they could have eased up, but they didn't. And that's what led the third parties rushing to Sony. The moment there was an alternative viable platform out there in PlayStation one, PlayStation two, um, you know, you figure, Oh, why didn't they rush to Sega? They tried, but Sega had some of the same draconian rules in place as well. Sony was the one that's like, you know what? You do what you want. You have creative freedom. Nintendo wasn't like that. And Nintendo took a long time before they started being that way. It, I mean, honestly, a lot of the draconian practices really stayed in place up until we, we, you. It, it was really the, the Iwata era. That's one thing we can credit Iwata for, for kind of getting rid of those draconian restrictions on third-party games. And even then... At that point, we had had a couple generations where Nintendo drove third parties away, and now when they're finally easing the restrictions, they release a system that's just radically different from everyone else, which just drove third parties away even more. So it kind of led to the situation where Nintendo is now, where they're they're trying to get third parties back, but now you know they're they're doing this hybrid thing, which is great, but also hard to 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 get all third parties on board. So. Nintendo is fighting an uphill battle to get back what they once had um, that they kind of did to themselves. So Nintendo isn't like this saint of a company that sometimes they get portrayed as just because they have some amazing games and I feel like some amazing platforms. So Nintendo had a bad weekend. They did, all, did things they shouldn't have did. They did things that sometimes you just need to leave alone. The Splatoon 2 thing would have never been a controversy if Nintendo would have just been understanding that this is a pandemic and just let that Melee tournament go. It's not the end of the world. Nintendo wouldn't be having issues right now with multiple YouTubers. I know RGT85 was working on a video about this. Boogie2988 brought a video on this. I don't think we'd have to worry about that kind of stuff happening uh, in a world uh, where Nintendo can be more on top of what's happening. It kind of feels like Nintendo's operating in a bubble and inside that bubble, they are completely misunderstanding of the world at large right now. 
and what's happening. This is a positive thing. Nintendo, while maybe not wanting to openly, publicly support this kind of thing, maybe because then you got to dive into the whole avenue of, 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 of how Etika's life ended and talking about suicide, and maybe they want to avoid that. But, but it doesn't mean they have to actively work against it either. They could have just let this be. And you know what? I'm going to be a Joy-Con boy for life. I know many of you out there are going to be Joy-Con boys for life, even if you didn't know who Etika was. Joy-Con boys for life, man. All right. I'll catch you guys in the next video.